This past year has been a revolving door of bad news, one after the other. It seems as if 2020 is a cursed year, and it tried to pack in as many newsworthy events as possible in these 12 months. Although it feels as if everything in the world has temporarily stopped working, scientists remind us time and time again that the universe is constantly waiting to show us something new. So today, here are Unexplained Mysteries, we'll be taking a look at some recent discoveries. Thousand-year-old Viking Horde found in Scotland In 2014, an amateur metal detector enthusiast named Derek McLennan unearthed the largest Viking Horde found in modern history. He discovered over a hundred artefacts dating back to the 9th and 10th century in Galloway, Scotland. Consequently, the Horde was given the nickname the Galloway Horde. The Horde is valued at around £2 million. The finder, MacLennan, earned a percentage of this. He shared his large earnings with the church whose land the artefacts were found on. Among the pieces discovered was the largest silver Carolingian pot from Germany ever found. This alone was estimated to be worth almost £250,000. After about two years of being unearthed, the pot was finally opened by Scotland's treasure trove unit. They spent months diligently working on this detailed conservation project. They ended up taking a CT scan of the pot to determine what was inside and how best to open it without damaging anything. Once inside, they found Irish brooches, silver and gold objects, Turkish silks, crystals, and a solid silver cross, and armbands. This discovery is immensely significant to the history of Western Europe. It showcases how vast the Vikings' connection to the continent was. Although it was already known that the Vikings raided the continent, it still provides an insight into the Vikings' thoughts. The jewellery came from all over Europe, and was amassed over generations, illustrating the interactions between the Vikings and the different people in early medieval Scotland. They reveal what was important and regal to them, but not why. What about these pieces was so significant to their cultural identity? Why were they collected over time, placed in an expensive vase, and subsequently buried? This is still one mystery that researchers will continue to agonise over. The hoard was quickly acquired by the National Museum Scotland, Law dictates that any treasure found with no known owner automatically becomes property of the Queen and the government. They've gone to painstaking levels to carry out as detailed as a conservation work as possible. The collection has been carefully examined and preserved over the past few years. It's been on display in museums all around the UK, but will now be brought back to the area where it was first found. Originally intended to be displayed in the Kirkwood Bright Galleries this year, it will be first shown at the National Museums of Scotland, then returned to Kirkwood Bright from August 2021 to May 2022. Ice melt in Alaska threatens to unleash a mega tsunami. Earlier this year, in an open letter to the Alaska Department of Natural Resources, scientists warned the government of a potential tsunami in the Prince William Sound in southern Alaska. They fear that a massive rock landslide might occur due to glacial melting in the Barry Arm along the south coast of Alaska, which would then trigger a catastrophic tsunami. Using satellite imagery, they explain that Barry Glacier is retreating from Barry Arm and exposing a large slope of rock face called a scarp. If this scarp were to suddenly fall, it could generate tsunamis that would threaten the people, marine life and infrastructure around the coast. Although no one lives there, this location is 30 miles northeast of Whittier, Alaska, which has a population of about 200 people. It's also frequented by commercial and recreational boats throughout the year. The effects of the landslide and tsunami would spread throughout, with the potential to reach even Whittier. This glacial melting is caused by climate change and is a concern for the entire world, not just Alaska. When the climate changes too quickly, the surrounding land can't adjust in time. Landslides and tsunamis are a threat to many other places around the world because of climate change. The scientists state that this scarp is already moving, and has been for a long time now, albeit very slowly. They fear that prolonged rain, 
earthquakes, or hot weather would trigger the speed and result in a landslide. The group of scientists consists of researchers from well-known institutions, such as Ohio State University and various US geological surveys. According to the geophysicist Chun-Li Day, they calculated that the collapse of the scarp would deposit 16 times more debris and release 11 times more energy than the Alaskan Lichua Bay landslide and mega tsunami of the 1950s. The Lichua Bay mega tsunami is the largest tsunami in modern history, larger even than the Japanese tsunami of 2011, though not as deadly. The Lichua Bay earthquake deposited almost 90 million tons of rock, was heard 50 miles away, and displaced water up to an elevation of 1,720 feet high. It's some cause for concern when experts post that we're waiting for a landslide, and could be even more destructive. Scientists are continually monitoring the retreating glacier and scarp. They're collecting satellite and airborne data in order to generate as many possible scenarios as accurately as they can. There is still uncertainty though. Scientists cannot predict exactly what will happen, they only have their fears and suspicions. Even so, they're working together with the state and federal government emergency teams to create a reliable early warning system to rapidly notify citizens in the case of a landslide and tsunami. They want citizens to participate in meetings to stay informed, and have emergency plans prepared in case of disaster. The researchers estimate that with the rate of melting occurring, we could potentially see the landslide occur within the year. As they continue to observe the glacial retreating, all we can do is hope that these are just unfounded fears and that their calculations are wrong. Radio Telescope Discovers Elagast Planet Recently, scientists have discovered a superplanet using the Low Frequency Array, otherwise known as the LOFAR Radio Telescope. They decided to name it BDR J1750-3809. Although given this long name, they've nicknamed it Elagast for ease of use. Their observations from a telescope revealed that Elagast is a brown dwarf, which is a celestial body that's too small to be a star, but too big to be a planet. They're often referred to as the failed stars of the universe, which is quite the unfortunate nickname. Brown dwarfs are dim and cold, since they don't have the same nuclear fusion reactions as other bright stars like our sun. They don't have enough mass to trigger a hydrogen fusion. This makes them difficult for scientists to find using the normal methods of discovery. For the past 25 years, stars and planets have almost all been discovered using infrared instruments. Researchers have mostly been using the heat signature of nuclear reactions to locate new celestial bodies. Brown dwarfs might be too small and cold for conventional methods, but they do emit light at radio wavelengths. Radio telescopes study the radio frequency that astronomical objects emit. They use extremely large dish antennas to pick up the weak radio waves from planets, stars and other galaxies. These telescopes can sometimes have a difficult time picking up astronomical frequencies because of all the interruptions and distractions from other modern human radio electronics. They can even receive interference from weather patterns like wind and temperature. The radio waves they receive from space are weaker than our cell phone signals. The telescopes focus on those weak waves and amplify them, so that researchers can analyse them. Elagast is the first dwarf planet to be found using a radio telescope instead of an infrared one. Researchers in the Netherlands decided to just cast out radio wavelengths from a low-far radio telescope over random areas of the universe, instead of only observing already catalogued dwarf planets. In order to detect anything, the telescope must focus on an astronomical source for hours, collecting all the frequencies, then averaging them out. The researchers weren't expecting to find anything noteworthy, so they were especially surprised when they picked up on a faint brown dwarf. Sometimes you find the best things when you least expect them. These findings are exciting astronomers everywhere, because they allow for possibilities of finding other cold and faint celestial bodies such as gas giant exoplanets, just by using radio telescopes. They had never thought to use radios to pick up on new planets and stars. They've only ever found brown dwarfs using infrared, then continued to observe the radio telescopes. 
they now have a method to find cold objects floating within the sun's vicinity that would otherwise have been too difficult to discover with an infrared survey. It's a game changer for them. The researchers first discovered Elagast using the LOFAR radio telescope in the Netherlands. They then confirmed their results with the International Gemini Observatory and the NASA Infrared Telescope Facility in Hawaii. It's exciting to see what else scientists find using radio telescopes in the future. So what do you make of these recent exciting discoveries? Be sure to let us know your thoughts in the comment section below and help us by growing this community whilst working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.